I'm Kristen Dobniak, holistic nutritionist and mama of two, and this is the Healthy Balance Mama podcast, a podcast about ditching the diet dogma, embracing intuitive eating, real food, and living healthy, happy, and whole. Please note the information and opinions on this podcast are intended for information and inspiration only and are not a substitute for professional medical advice or treatment. Please consult with your healthcare practitioner before making any changes. Now, on to the show. So, you've made the decision. Diet, I am done with you. You have ravaged my life for way too long. You have stolen my joy, stripped the pleasure out of eating, ruined social events, made me feel less than, wrong, like a failure, over and over again. But I kept coming back to you. Your allure is real, feeling better in my body, better about myself, living a better life. But I know these things are a lie. I know I don't need you to feel better about my body. I know I don't need you to feel energized and alive. I know my life is better without you in it. I know I can find health and happiness in a place of love. So I'm saying goodbye, once and for all. Diet, we are over. What now? Can I tell you how many times I told myself I was never dieting again, or convinced myself the restrictive plan I was on wasn't a diet? I subscribed to flexible dieting, as if tracking every morsel of food I ate was in some way balanced. I went on cleanses and juice fasts to boost my energy and improve my digestion. I bought into the Whole 30s promise of food freedom through extreme restriction. That's like taking your car away in New England in the dead of winter, but you have to get to work, groceries, church, all the places you need to go. So you take the worst possible route, walking, and you're freezing cold and angry and exhausted every single day for an entire month. And at the end of the month, you get your car back. But you're supposed to still try to walk to work. In fact, you're supposed to want to work, walk to work now because don't you feel so much better not having a car? No, you're going to want to drive everywhere. You're never going to want to leave that freaking car because that is freedom, friends. And what do most of us do when we get off of a restrictive plan? We eat all the things. I don't care what the plan tells you about easing back into your life. Most of us last a couple days easing back in, and we want all the things we couldn't have. And then what happens? Well, we either eat them or we don't. We feel guilty either way. We either feel like failures for listening to our body's desperate cries for balance, or we think we failed for not feeling like we want to live this way for the rest of our lives. This isn't balance, friends. You do not find balance by going to extremes. Think about a pendulum. The further it swings to one side, the further it swings to the other. Balance happens in the middle. Balance happens when we allow ourselves to find a place where we're gently swaying in rhythms of eating in a way that feels good to us. Sometimes we go a little further to one side and aren't making choices that serve us. That's okay, because we gently swing back as we become more in tune with what our body truly needs and what feels good for us. You do not find balance from cutting everything out and adding it back in. That is stressful physiologically and psychologically, and it's unnecessary. It causes us to label foods as good or bad, our choices as right or wrong. And friend, this is important. Food has no morals. Our society is what has turned eating well into a religion. We think we need to be perfect, perfect eaters, in order to be pure. And this is simply not true. Your body has everything it needs to help you learn what feels good. I can make suggestions as a nutritionist, but I am simply your guide. The real work comes from tuning in. And luckily, you have the best possible tool to do that. It's not in your pocket as an app. It doesn't require weighing your body or your food. It doesn't require measuring, tracking, counting. All it requires is you committing to a loving relationship with yourself. Going to extremes, dieting in the name of health, it's not only proven ineffective, it's borderline abuse. Severe restriction is used in war as a form of torture for a reason. Why would we treat our bodies that way? Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. 
1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20. Whether or not you are a Christian and have the same beliefs I do, these are powerful words. God asks us to honor him with our bodies, that these bodies are temples for our souls. They deserve the utmost respect and honor. Honoring our bodies means honoring our whole selves. It means nourishing our bodies with food that feel good, gentle nutrition, movement, enjoying foods that are truly satisfying, honoring our hunger and our fullness, and respecting the body that was created just for us. So where do we start? Today, I want to leave you with five tangible tips, tools to begin to make peace with food and honor your body without dieting or restriction. Number one, have your cake and eat it too. Also known as give yourself unconditional permission to eat. Guys, I know how hard this is. Believe me, I know how hard this is. This is one of the biggest struggles I've had. It's especially hard if you're coming from a place where you've been restricting or yo-yo dieting for a long time and equate that restriction to health. But you've ditched the diet dogma that tells you restriction is the key to health. This is truly the next step for so many women once they've decided to ditch the diet dogma. I am giving it to you right now as your friend. You have permission to eat whatever you want, whenever you want, however much feels good. Okay? Now you need to give yourself the same permission. Here's the caveat. You are going to overshoot sometimes. Sometimes you are not going to allow yourself to eat what you really want. Sometimes you're going to eat something and realize that probably wasn't what you wanted to eat. This is all a learning process. Take each of those experiences in as just that, experiences, and move on. There might very well be a period of time where you eat all the things because you don't know how to honor your body at this point. This will pass as you begin to learn to honor your hunger and fullness and make choices that honor your best health. One of the things that can help you and one of the first things I work on with my clients is tip number two, and that is to choose foods that satisfy. Now, you might not know what these are just yet. Giving yourself unconditional permission to eat allows you to make a choice that you feel will satisfy you, and you might hit the mark sometimes and you might not other times. In fact, I guarantee there's going to be plenty of both of these times. Satisfaction is both physical and mental. You can ask yourself a couple questions. Did this food satisfy my desire to eat? Did this food satisfy my taste buds? Did this food satisfy my body? Am I still hungry? Do I feel overfull, bloated, or uncomfortable? Do I feel good and energized? Choosing foods that satisfy comes first from making the choice that sounds good, so that's the unconditional permission to eat, this is satisfying in and of itself. And then it's recognizing whether or not it satisfies physically. And then you can start taking note of these things. So having a balance of all nutrients, especially fat and protein, helps to satisfy us physically. But listen, this is not supposed to be legalistic. Your body knows, and you will begin to recognize what foods feel the best. You'll begin to notice what your beautiful balance is. Some people are satisfied with a different balance of nutrients. Remember, no two bodies are the same. That's why we don't rely on experts to tell us exactly what to eat. We have to rely on our own inner cues. And that is a learning process. Hey friends, I just wanted to pop in and share about a free live event I have coming up over on my Facebook page, Healthy Mama Chris, on Friday, February 22nd at 1 p.m. It's all about intuitive eating, what it is, and how you can get started for yourself. This is a live event, so you'll be able to hop on and ask me questions and interact as I share. Of course, there will always be a recording, but I'm only going to leave it up for 24 hours. So if you want a copy of the recording or want to be notified when I'm going on live on the 22nd or for later lives, be sure to join my email list at healthymamachris.com slash list. And be sure to like me on Facebook, facebook.com slash HealthyMamaChris, for updates on future live events. Now, back to the show. So number three, we want to begin to recognize your hunger. Notice I said begin. So many of us are so out of tune with our hunger. We often have no idea if we're even hungry. We just eat according to plan, according to time. This was me for so many years. I need to tell you a short story, actually, because I want you to know there are areas that I'm still working on, too. 
So about a week or so ago, I was feeling hungry on a Saturday afternoon and I went to the kitchen and grabbed a couple energy bites I made earlier that week. I sat down with my five-year-old to watch an episode of Fuller House, which is our family guilty pleasure, and I had an immediate realization. So I turned to my husband, who was sitting on the other side of the room, and I told him, I don't know what time it is. He was like, uh, so he started looking for his phone. No, I told him, I just grabbed a snack because I was hungry without checking the time. And he was actually surprised. You see, for years, this was one of my major food hangups. I wouldn't let myself eat when I was hungry. Or I would let myself eat when I was hungry, but if it was at a reasonable time. If it wasn't noon, it wasn't lunchtime. If it wasn't four, I couldn't be hungry for a snack. How crazy does that sound? I use the pee analogy often. Hunger is a biological cue, just like the urge to pee. It's designed to tell us something. We don't say, no, no, it's not time to pee yet. We just respond. We go to the bathroom. If we're hungry all day long, that is not wrong. It is our body sending us messages about how we're treating it. If we're never hungry, same thing. There's some sort of imbalance there. But I was caught in it for so long, this pattern of thinking I needed to eat at these particular times. And in those moments I catch myself truly listening, I notice. And it is such a freeing feeling. I let myself eat when I'm hungry now. In noticing your hunger... It's important to recognize this might be a process. If it's been a long time since you paid attention and there are subtle cues of hunger you might not realize are hunger, like a headache, a short temper, dizziness, lightheadedness. So I have my clients do a worksheet on recognizing their hunger and noticing the subtle cues for this reason. So this really takes tuning in. I'm telling you, this process of intuitive eating, a lot of it is, a lot of it is inside out. And that goes along with number four. Once we start noticing our hunger, then we start to notice our fullness. So notice your fullness. This goes along with hunger. If you've been in the dieting mindset for some time, we often don't trust our body to tell us when it's full. We rely on external cues, like the time of the day for hunger, and instead on portions, points, macros, you get what I mean, for fullness. But this isn't listening to our body. I will often give anxious clients a guideline on how to build a plate with a caveat that no one knows what feels good in your body except you. So it's a baseline. So the first thing to do here is to simply notice your fullness levels without judgment. And it's huge. This means pausing every few bites to take a deep breath, talk with your dinner mates, or simply say a prayer of gratitude for the food you get to eat. And when you do that, Notice how your body feels. Notice if your hunger is gone, if you're starting to feel full, if you're really full, or if you want more, physically or mentally. So often we eat according to plan until we have a cheat day or go off plan and go completely crazy and end up over full and uncomfortable. And we often overshoot our actual hunger and end up extra full when we put off eating for too long. This is how you start to find balance. You honor your hunger and you learn your fullness. It's important to notice these times and you'll start to recognize the subtleties of fullness when you begin to tune in to your body. And again, I need to mention, this need not be legalistic. Sometimes you are not going to eat when you're hungry or you're going to eat when you're not hungry, sometimes you're not going to notice your fullness. This is not the hunger and fullness diet. This is getting in tune with your body. Number five, honor your health with choices you already know feel good. This is so important, friends. Just because you're going through this journey of intuitive eating doesn't mean you can't honor your health at the same time. It also means you might need some time to simply allow yourself to eat whatever you want, whenever you want. And we want to allow ourselves that anyway. But respect the urge to honor your health. What are those things you already do that you know feel good? Maybe it's starting the day with a green smoothie. Maybe when you're going through the intuitive eating journey, you really just feel like you need to start the day with a donut every day for a month. Notice how that feels. When the day comes that you have an urge to have something other than a donut first thing, because hey, that works for some people, but for a lot of people it doesn't. Honor that desire. You don't have to eat the donut because you can. You can choose the green smoothie. You can also say no to that green smoothie. 
that's also honoring your health. It's okay if one morning you want the donut. It's okay if one morning you want the green smoothie. You'll likely learn that the donut won't fill you as long as the smoothie will. Maybe you'll notice it doesn't feel as good in your body. Maybe it feels fine. Noticing these things is the first step to respecting your body by honoring what truly feels good and giving yourself permission to sometimes make a different choice. When you're truly honoring your body, you will find a balance of these occasions, and it will take time. But if you're truly walking the path of intuitive eating, the balance will come naturally. You have to trust. Balance forced is not true balance. But honor those experiences. When you feel yourself wanting to make a nourishing choice, when you want a salad for lunch, go for it. And notice when the choice you made did nourish you, whether it's the donut or the green smoothie, the salad or the pizza. Notice that. Friends, I hope this was helpful. Coming to terms with intuitive eating is a journey. It is normal if you are feeling resistant and nervous about the process. Trusting in our bodies when we've relied on external cues for so long is scary but it is one of the most powerful journeys you will walk. I hope I left you with some tangible tools you can use to begin your intuitive eating journey. And if you have questions, if you want to chat, please don't hesitate to email. Chris, that's K-R-I-S, at HealthyMamaChris.com. For show notes, real food recipes, and more, visit HealthyMamaChris.com. Thank you so much for tuning in. And remember, if you liked this podcast, please hit the subscribe button so you'll see every episode. And if you loved it, go ahead and give it a review for me or share it with your friends on Instagram and Facebook. Every subscribe, every five-star review, every share helps this podcast be seen and heard by more women that need to hear it. My hope is that you feel healthy, happy, and whole. Have a beautiful day, friends.